Okay. Sorry I'm late. <clears throat> People jumping on, cool. Jumping on quick. It's always exciting. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry I'm late, man. It's just been one of those mornings where I'm, you know, trying to get it together. Um, while we wait another minute, how about this? It's a horrible picture, but something new. Not a great shot. It's backed up. Something new I've been working on. Okay, that's in, it's inappropriately uh, installed. Leaning against the wall against something else. Um, thank you for coming on. We are populating the landscape quickly. Very cool. Okay. Um, where are we here? You know, I'm kind of like a... <laughs> Gordon Paul. Is that Flash? <laughs> Long time no talk, man. We should catch up sometime. Uh, Okie dokie. Well, here we are. It's amazing how quickly people jump on here, which is great. Okay. Yep. Flash. Flash in the house. How about it? Good to see you, buddy. Okay. We're here. Again, apologies for being a little bit late. I'm usually pretty prompt regarding these lives. It's just been one of those days. Um, I... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's uh, weeks, months, days. They all sort of blur together. And I mean, I just sort of keep my head down and keep uh, cranking away. <laughs> North Copeland, go for go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I uh, anyway, um, just been working away. That's it. Uh, I hope y'all can take the, take a little time and um, visit my website. Get on my email list. You'll click contact and then you'd enter your email address and click the subscribe button, the black button. So please join my email list to hear about things I've got going on. And I think what I'm going to do today is I am going to jump. I'm going to jump right in and... Um, what I want, I want to talk to you about a couple of things really quickly. I think one bleeds into the other. And again, forgive me for, um, I'll be sort of doing this number again because I've got some notes that I didn't memorize, but I think you can still, you can still um, uh, get a lot from this. I want to talk to you today about arts, what what's referred to as the X, what some people might call the X factor of art. Um, it's an, un, it's sort of this, it's this sort of um, unquantifiable, undescribable uh, X factor, for lack of a better way of putting it. And what I want to talk to you about today is that what you make, when I say you, I mean you as an artist, if not even just an artist, just anyone else, but primarily an artist, but you don't necessarily have to be an artist. But what I'd like to say is what you make isn't completely a matter of conscious choice. Uh, you're never going to know exactly what you're going to make until you make it. You're going to start making things and you're going to have a plan. You might have sketches. You might have a prep, preparatory sketches and notes and all kinds of diagrams in mind. But once you actually make it, there's always a component to it that you just didn't expect. It's this unquantifiable um, uh, thing. And um, sometimes it might seem initially like a surprise, but then other times... Once that sort of unexpected thing happens, you realize, oh, of course, that was part of it all along. That makes sense. So afterwards, you still may not be sure where it came from, but you'll definitely notice that it's um, that it'll definitely seem obvious to you afterwards um, what it's all about. So I hope that made sense. It sounds that's another sort of sort of vague almost uh, ephemeral, ethereal, intangible sort of a uh, notion. But, you know, there's a lot of times where I'm on here where I'm kind of asking you to try and uh, hug a cloud, you know, almost like 
give a cloud a real big bear hug. And that's a very hard thing. I would imagine I've never hugged a cloud before, but I would imagine that's a, that's a very hard thing to do. But that's all part of this whole sort of creative process, art making process. And so again, you're not going to necessarily have um, a conscious choice in every single ingredient and element of what you do. You're gonna come up for air at the completion of it and there's gonna be a curveball thrown in there that you weren't expecting. And I think that it's important to sort of embrace the X factor regarding what you make and actually look forward to, to its arrival. Hope I made sense with that concept. Does that make sense? I'd like to, I'd like to hear from you all about that. I'm gonna talk about something, something else as well, but you know, I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, art's not about ex and, uh, art's more b about an experience. It's not necessarily about uh, mastery, and I think that that's also something really important for y'all to remember too. It doesn't matter if it's understood, and it matters. What really matters if it instigates some sort of a feeling or an emotion, you know. And I think that I think that we all we all kind of know these things already. We just don't really articulate them as often as we should because we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to sort of execute from point A to Z and, um, and have it all planned out. And that's not necessarily the way it works when you're making, not just making art, but doing anything that's creative or has some sort of creativity involved in it. Um, anyway, uh, that's really the main topic of that that I wanted to mention today. I also wanted to briefly mention something else, which is genre. Um, different genres possess their own, uh, their own sort of formal logic and your work will, will sometimes, or most of the time it'll fit into, uh, it'll use some, it'll incorporate some sort of a genre to fit into the flow of history. A genre can be a portraiture, landscapes, quote unquote, quote unquote, abstract sort of art or some form of abstract art. It can be any number of things, but sometimes how you, or most of the time, how you can sort of study, look, analyze, and incorporate different genres is going to be uh, an avenue for you to sort of figure out where you fit in the canon, in the, in the place of art history. And your, your intention will be to sort of breathe new life into that genre. I hate using the word style, but if you can incorporate, because style is such a terrible word, it's so overused, misused, and misunderstood. But if you can sort of inject a fresh style into a certain genre, then maybe you're onto something, you know? Maybe that's gonna be how your personal identity will be woven into the work and in turn placed in the context or, um, yeah, placed into the context of art history. So, in just a short amount of time, I covered a couple of different things. I talked about uh, the X factor of making art, and I talked about genre, and that's pretty much it. Boom, door to door in, in a very short amount of time. I think we're gonna have a quick one today. Anyway, those are the main things. I hope you heard that. I hope you have a few questions for me. Hope you have a few good questions for me. And as I've been doing during this pandemic, uh, I've been doing the questions and answers after I give my little helpful hints. And that's where we're at now. <clears throat> questions, comments, feedback. I know it takes a minute here. I gotta wait a minute for some of that stuff to trickle in. Oh, and you know what I should probably do is, um, should probably go back through the feed. I wasn't, I was so busy talking, I wasn't looking at the questions. Good news is I think the Wi-Fi is pretty solid today. I'm not getting a lot of breakups. Let me um, scroll back through here. And see what I got. 
Lots of people like to wave. They like to use this little wave emoticon. Hey, Flash, if you're still in Austin, yeah, man, maybe I'll uh, swing by for the lunch if I ever get it, get it over that way. Okay. Lots of waves, lots of hellos. A comment that doesn't make sense, totally. Ah, Jeff.Oxley, here's a great one. Are you ever, see, very clear, simple question, you know, but, but very, very, uh, very s solid. Are you ever surprised by what your subconscious reveals to you? Jeff.Oxley, I, uh, I am. Um, what I've noticed, though, is for me personally, I've gotten so used to being surprised or sort of habitual recurring motifs coming up that I probably don't pay as close attention to it as I should. And I don't spend as much time as many other people would probably analyzing it. But I am somewhat surprised. And that's probably, um, I would imagine that's a good thing to be surprised what your subconscious reveals to you in your artwork, right? I'm assuming you're talking about in your artwork and not in other parts of your life. I mean, we're kind of talking about what you make as being therapeutic and being therapy. You know, there's a whole field of study, very popular field of study called art therapy. People go to school to become art therapists, right? Thank you, Jeff.Oxley. Give me some good questions, people. No hiding, no lurking around. I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to help. That's why I'm doing this. Um, okay, John Elliot, John Joe Elliot. Hey, uh, hey, good talk. How often do you paint? Uh, how are you if you don't get to paint for any reason? Okay, um, I work every day. And I turn into a raging maniac if I don't. No, I'm kidding. I don't. Um, I, I think I. everyone's different. So, yeah. I like to be in here working every day. And if I don't, maybe at t I'm, maybe if time goes by where I don't, um, I, I, uh, if I'm paying attention to myself, I might get a little anxious or restless. Or, um, you know, I hope that that helped. Who look who's here. Look who's here. Sipitotheron is back. Narrative and abstract. How do you keep it simple? Focus on one feeling or emotion about it. Uh, you probably just answered your own questions, which many of you do. You kind of know the answers to the questions before you, you ask them. Why do y'all do that? I'm kind of going up high just to shake it up a little bit. Although the blinding glare coming off my head is really kind of bugging me, but fuck it. It's one of those days. Um, poor sauce. That's a good question, but I don't know how to answer it. If your paintings were a band, which band would you pick and why? It's a fun question to answer, but I, I mean, I listen to so many different things and there's so much different kind of musicality going on in what I make in, a, in an indirect way that I don't really know how to answer that. But I, I like the idea of the question, if that makes sense. Jeff.Oxley, dream interpretation. Uh, you know, it's funny you bring up dream interpretation. I have, I have a friend, another artist, who's part of a dream interpretation group, and she keeps a pen and a notebook by her bedside and they meet a once a month or something. So they meet on a regular basis and they talk, or maybe they meet once a week. They might meet once a week 
and they talk about um, they talk about the dreams that they've documented. And um, there is a leader of the group who's some sort of certified leader, maybe not officially certified. And then she tries to incorporate the dream interpretation into her paintings, which I think is really interesting. Uh, I know nothing about that. And I end up uh, remembering, I don't really end up remembering a lot of my dreams. Um, so, okay. Oh, any more questions? Did I miss a few? This might be a super short one today. Wow, let me get out of here. Getting in and out. Margarita boy, nice to see you. Hard question, good question. Margarita, I mean, sorry, Julian Pinkston, I, uh, someone I know in real life is on here. Okay, your work is a meditative process, taking loads of time. Uh, I'm gonna stand up for this one, I need to put my thinking cap on. Thank God for coffee. Your work is a meditative process, taking loads of time, thinking, looking, then making moves in bursts. I, myself, take this approach. How do you keep the marks feeling right? Uh, uh, really interesting, insightful comment. Thank you for asking that. I don't know how I keep the marks feeling right. I think that, um, I don't, you know, and sometimes they feel wrong and that can be okay too. I actually like the idea that you presented, but the question is kind of, uh, almost, it's almost, I don't, I don't know if that question's even, um, you can even answer that question. I don't really even know if there's such a thing as right or wrong regarding the marks that you make. There's just a matter of um, what feels resolved and what doesn't. I like the idea of things coming to a, a satisfying resolution more than them being right or wrong. I think of things like right or wrong when I'm taking a math test, not so much when I'm making, when I'm making art. Resolution is what I'm aiming for with whatever kind of marks that I'm making, whether they're bursteful or not. If you actually look closely at my work, there's a lot of things in the work that people don't talk about, but they're actually really important in the work that have nothing to do with emotive bursts of spontaneous gesture or mark making. There's a lot of um, hard edge geometric abstraction going on in the work. There always has been. And... Um, other types of marks that are made that require things being masked off with hard edges and sharp, sharp edges, sharp shapes. Um, just the, the total opposite of just some sort of a mode of gestural mark making. And I've always done that and it never gets talked about because it requires a little bit closer looking and people want to lump you in with not you, Margarita boy, but people want to lump General people want to lump you in with the easiest read that they can. Um, hope that helped. Taka lo, taka lo art. Is there any art form you hate? Oh, the questions are coming in. Great. Uh, is there any art form you hate? If, and if so, why? Um, I have to think about that. I'm sure there's something I could find. I could think of that I don't like, but, um, well, if you're not, if we're not talking about, um, visual art, if we're talking about music, what's that elevator music called? I don't like that. Maybe I even hate that off the top of my head. I have to think about that one, but thank you for the question, Takalo Art. Uh, this is a good comment. It's not really a question, but I'm going to read it for everyone to hear it from me. Uh, Ad, Adaset.art says, interesting timing on the X Factor part. Just read something similar in The Inner Game. I guess that's a book. Is that a book, The Inner Game? Ad, Adaset.art. 
If so, who's the author? I'd, I'd be curious. Uh, similar concept of quieting the conscious mind, but knowing the results will still come. Knowing the result still comes from practice experience. Practice makes perfect, as cliche as it sounds. I like that comment. Thank you. <clears throat> Muzak. Yes, Takalo Art, Muzak. I don't like Muzak. I almost even say I hate Muzak. So, sip it to Thera Heron. I don't know why I like saying that. I always, I know I'm fucking getting it wrong. Um, yeah, Muzak, sip it to Heron. Okay. Um, this might be almost it. I'm getting questions in foreign languages. Uh, Martin dot Cejas, yo no hablo español muy bien. Uh, Inglés, por favor. Okay. I'm, I know I missed a couple of things, but I think I hit the big things. I know uh, I kind of keep these sort of short and sweet, but I do think that they're powerful and helpful. If you think, if, if you think about what I said regarding the X factor, and if you think about what I said regarding genre, I think that sort of stuff will help you as you move forward in your dental practice, in your plumbing practice, in your accounting practice, in your studio art practice. And, uh, Okay, great. I think I'm gonna go. I think that's it. If this was helpful to you, send me an email and let me know. All right? Thank you. All right, bye-bye.